This is where Perth talks at night with Chris Ilsley on Perth Tonight. Indeed, must be time to catch up with Ben Aylett and talk technology. Ben Aylett.com is the website. One L, two T's in Aylett, and he's also identified by his Hawaiian shirts. And he's here right now. By the way, if you'd like to have a chat, if you do have some technical problems, if you've got any technical questions, mm -hmm. anything else that's concerning you or just information you want to know, he's a man to have a chat to. Yeah, cool. My, now. my friend, we have an enterprise yes. that has got itself in a bit of hot water. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, it has yeah. fallen victim to ransomware. Yeah, now, so the spectre of ransomware still keeps going. So Toll might have got themselves uh, extricated from the ransomware mess they've had, but we've had yet another, uh, I suppose, industry juggernaut. Uh, fall to ransomware, and this time it is the wool board. So, uh, Jeez. yeah, a few people in primary industries not too happy about that. Yeah, so this is the the actual wool trading platform called Talman, uh, and it's it's been attacked, and it's it's basically crippled the Australian wool industry. So this is the uh, like the. Uh, business to business, uh, like e-commerce yep. dealers, is how the farmers get their wool uh, off their properties and into the hands of the buyers who then turn it into well, whatever it is they want to turn it into. Uh, mm. So it's been um, hit by ransomware and, uh, you know, so obviously they can't hit anything. They, they can't uh, sell anything and uh, they're kind of crippled. So they've been down for about six days now, seven days, and they've got a bit of a stockpile of wool backing up. Oh, I bet. We'll come yeah. back to that in a moment. All right. Got some calls to deal with. Hi, Hello. James. Hi, Chris. Hi, Ben. How are you? I'm oh, very well, James. What's up, mate? Uh, no, it's a very simple one, actually. I probably should ring up. It's just saving myself. Look, uh, going through a little bit of a change in life for my sister, for my sister and uh, it involved changing, uh, flipping over Foxtel, probably gather what I mean. Um, now, she, she's currently paying $214, which is really expensive, and all she yeah. wants a, is uh, a basic package. So she looked on there and she's saying... All these words about broadband. How much that. is she paying, James? Two hundred and fourteen dollars. Okay, wow. I'm going to tell you something. If yeah. you you're you're the accountant in your family, get on the phone and start negotiating with them. Absolutely. All I'm right, I can tell you right now, you can at least halve that amount without reducing any of your services. Hmm. I pay I pay sixty seven dollars now. Before we, all I wanted to know yep. is that as simple as ringing them up and saying. I'll, I, I, I'm going to get her to make me the representative because I can talk. Yes. And I'll say, look, my sister's gone through um, some uh, things in life and now she's having to <laughs> review what she's spending. Um, yep. What does she need to do? Does she just tell you guys that I want to be on? All she wants is the Channel 7, 9, 10, the Sports Channel and the Movie Channel and the Basic Channel. And that's all. All right. Uh, may, just, may, may I make a suggestion? Chris, for sure. Phone them up. And tell them if yeah. they don't do something about the price, you're going to tell them to stick it where the sun don't shine. Hmm. Okie dokie. But is, right. there any, is there any technical issues? Technical issues? No, there shouldn't be any technical issues. Uh, if you just want right. to buy a sports package, there should be nothing wrong with just getting the sports package. Uh, yeah. if, if, if if they're not willing to offer it as a part of the, like the satellite service that comes with the IQ box and that, we can yeah. look at something called Foxtel now. Uh, this is no. the streaming service. Yeah, ben, if, I could, if I could just stop you there, sure. sorry. Without going into the complicated, she's they've currently had, um, when a pair, uh, a Foxtel, and the box is there, whether it's underground or the satellite's there, everything's there. Mm -hmm. Just start changing the package. And James, I, just yeah. tell them to drop the price, mate. The price you're paying, quite frankly, is extortionate. Yep. Absolutely. And right. when I found it, I nearly She agreed. should be able to get it for less than half that and not Absolutely. drop any of the services. Thanks very much, Chris. Thanks, Ben. No, no worries, mate. No Thanks worries for calling. about that. You, the trick is you've got to negotiate with them. Yeah. And look, they're, they're not monsters. No, uh, but they will negotiate. But they're not going to ring you up and say, hey, we can offer you a deal yeah. that's far cheaper. But if you phone them up and say, I've got two words to say to you, Stan and Netflix, <laughs> trust me, they're going to get a whole new attitude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hi, Nolene. Hi, how are you going, guys? Good. Very I good, Nolene. Ben, I hope you can help me, Ben. Well, let's give it a go. Uh, last week when we had the storm, uh -huh. um, when I came home from work, I had no power. Right. Um, so I thought, okay, that's just common. You know, we've got the storm. Yeah. Don't worry too much about it. Yeah. Went out to my games room, opened the fridge. Oh, that's funny. We've got power. Went to my box. Yeah, the power switch is tripped. Okay. So that's fine. Turned it back on. Uh -huh. No worries. Uh -huh. I went to use my phone. I've got no internet. Uh-huh. 
went in the lounge room and the little black box, the NBN box, yeah. is blowing. There's no power to it whatsoever. Mm. I changed power points. Yep. I took plugs out, replugged mm. it in. There's yep. no lights on it whatsoever. Mm. So I, f- I phoned Telstra up one full day backwards and forwards with them telling me that I need to do troubleshooting when I've explained a thousand times I can't troubleshoot, there is no power. <laughs> the Eventually, box is dead. Yes, Nolan, I share your frustration. Oh, You're talking to dear. an overseas call centre and you then have yeah, to yeah. say, dead, nada, not working, it doesn't matter what I do, dead. Yeah, and you yeah. still don't get tried through. That. That, I know, I know. They'll, they'll still try to uh, go through the script though, yes. I am an I, idiot I reading off a card. If you want to send... Yep, if you want to send me my way just for a day, I'll stay home and troubleshoot, but I'm not missing a day's pay to troubleshoot for nothing. Eventually, mm. I got an, um, an SR number from them. Yep. Um, someone will contact you in 24 hours. Okay. Now, this was last Wednesday. Oh. It hasn't happened, has it? It hasn't. So, Telstra have a Facebook page. I put a piece up on the Facebook page yep. along with a 1,000 other people. Right. I got several replies over the weekend. I went backwards and forwards. Oh, we're so sorry to hear this, Nolene. Um, uh, it does seem a bit strange. Uh, did you get a number? I gave them the number, sent them the number. Mm. I said, no, I don't like to be called a liar. I'm telling you what is happening. Yeah. Um, to no avail, I got a text message back um, on Sunday saying, I've now forwarded an email off to your caseworker asking them to contact you. Right. Jesus. Okay. Well, at, at, at least and I'm you... paying for my data yeah. because, yeah. Well, firstly, I'll be asking for a credit on all of that. Oh, yeah. Mm. Trying to get through to them again is like Buckley. Mm. Well, you know, you know, yeah. there's two things you can do, Nolan. I reckon in your position, I would actually be heading off to the telecommunications industry ombudsman, to tell you the truth. The other thing you can do, and this really annoys the hell out of them, rock up to Telstra shops. Wherever your that. nearest Telstra shop is and say, mate, I'm not talking to any call centres, I'm not talking to anyone, yep. I am going to be here, mm. I am going to be the biggest pain in the backside you've ever experienced, I want this fixed. And I'm not I talking to your bloody call centre because all I'm being told is to go through a, a set of fault checks when I can't even get the damn thing to turn on. Hand it over, physically take the box there, hand it over to them and say, mate, you plug it in and you tell me if it works. Okay, because I've been into the Telstra shop and I got flatly refused by saying, there's nothing we can do, you need to go through. Well, Um, no, you say, yes, there is something you can do, otherwise I won't be with your phone company and I am going to put you through the seventh circle of telecommunications industry ombudsman hell. Now, are you going to fix us, mate, or are you just going to sit there and be as unhelpful as you're clearly being paid to be? That's how I'd react to them. But then okay, I, I, well, I get stroppy, Nolan, with people, especially when they start... Well, I'm, tr- I'm trying to get stroppy, but nothing mm. seems to be working. I just keep go, getting... go to the telecommunications industry ombudsman then, Nolan. You've got, you've got incident numbers, you've got report numbers. Mm. And one of the things I'd be telling them is quite clearly, you know, when they go through... This, see, the problem is people are given an idiot card system. The people with whom you're having a conversation don't know anything. You're not talking to a Ben Aylett. If you're talking to a Ben Aylett, he'd use his brains, he'd be able to work you through the system and he'd go straight away, this lady's got a box that's blown, we need to get a new box installed. He'd work it out in five seconds. These other numpties are just reading off an idiot card and they haven't got a clue. On the Facebook page, I even put up, I didn't put Ben's name, but I said I listen to 6PR regularly. Um, On Tuesday night, they will have a gentleman on there who I will be ringing and putting a complaint through to. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, but nothing works. They, they're not no, interested. No. They just keep saying, we can't help you, we no, can't help you. No, because as an organisation, they no. suck. That's their problem. And they don't care. And if they think they do care, it's in, it's instances like yours, Nolene, that prove they don't. Go to the telecommunications industry ombudsman. Because one thing they do... How do underst- I get in touch with them? Do I just look it up, do I? Yeah, that's um, right. Yes. Telecommunications industry ombudsman, it is. Okay. I'll, hang on. I'll just give you... I'm just going to have to bring it up to do yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, here we are. It is. It, it, I'm just give, want to give you the website. It is www.tio.com.au. That's the one. And they've got T-I-O. T-I-O. So that's Tango India Oscar dot com dot au. And on the front page, they have got a big orange button in the top right hand corner that says complaints. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll be doing that. Very soon. And no, Nolene, do it as soon as you can. One thing they do understand, 
they do understand the O word for ombudsman. Okay. Yep. I'm sorry you're going through that too, Nolan. Jeez, Ben, these <sighs> people make me so angry. It, yeah, it is. Seriously, it, could they get customer service any more wrong if they actually ran a course on how to do it? Yeah, yeah. Now, it's this is the first major storm we've had since the mass rollout of NBN services. Uh, so we are talking... Mm. Um, they're not new technologies, but they're new to Australia. Uh, so telcos are having to grapple with this and because we've got the NBN Co sort of in there where they've got to um, liaise with the, with the NBN Co yeah. to get replacement Their gear Their problem, organized. not ours, mate. Exactly. I totally agree uh, that, it, that it is not um, our problem, it's theirs. Yes, and if they've, got, if they've got issues with the NBN, well, then they can take the NBN to court and sue them for... Yep. Failure to provide services under the terms of their contract, whatever Absolutely, the case may yeah. be. It's yeah. up to them to deal with NBN. But this is effectively... But as customer service this, yeah. goes, Telstra are shocking. They are shocking. Yeah, they, yes. And they use overseas call centres yeah. with people who have no concept of how our telecommunication system in this country operates. Yeah. And they are people with zero knowledge about the product or service. They're simply reading off an idiot card. Yeah. And, and someone like Nolene rings up and gets treated like a two-bit idiot. She's mm. explained. The yes. thing is blown. There is no power to it. Now, I'm sorry, what part of I can't do any testing on this because it's stuffed, don't you people understand? Mm. Is it that hard? You, well, apparently for the call centres, yes, it is. And I would agree when the call centres are involved, things tend to go downhill. Yep, yep. Yeah. And, of course, people like Telstra are too stupid to realise that these overseas call centres, even though they're saving them a mozza because they're having to pay third world wages to these people, what they don't understand is that they're doing their business a lot of damage. Mm. And people like Nolene, who may well have been a long-term customer, hell, she might even go back to the days of telecom. Yeah. You no, know, they're just screwing those people out and they don't even know they're doing it. Yeah. Because yeah. somebody in some office is looking at a spreadsheet. What did I say before? If you ever want to find the problem with a business, look for the penny pinching. Nine double two double one eight eighty two. the number if you'd like to have a chat to Ben. Kerry. Oh, thanks for taking my call, um, Chris and Ben. I'm not sure if you can help me, but um, I'm with Telstra Velocity. I built my house seven years ago and that's what they've got in this estate I'm in. Yep. And... Um, I've always had um, 50 gigabytes of internet thrown and um, it was $70, but they, because I'm a disability pension, they gave me $20 credit. Okay. But I received an email, um, I think it was three weeks ago, to say that um, that's not, uh, they're deleting it and the next, the one that they're going to start me on is... Um, 500 gigabytes for $75 yep. a month and they'll give me a $10 credit. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, you know, like I didn't really want to have to be paying more each month and mm. can they do that? Uh, okay. Now, this is in response to some problems they've been having with the NBN. So uh, it's not just us uh, normal folk who are having problems with the NBN. It's Telstra uh, who have now... Uh, well, they've kind of um, said, that's it, we can't do it anymore. They are now shutting down the high-speed NBN offerings uh, because NBN is not, simply not up to standard on it. Now, what they're, what they're doing there, I think we're mixing up speed with data caps. Uh, so mm. the, the speed is probably 25 megabits per second and they've capped your data at... 5. 25 megabits per second, for God's yeah. sake. On the old HFC, we used to get 104 Yes, yes, I know. But uh, the, the Telstra smart wired networks or the Telstra velocity networks, uh, they are kind of limited, I believe. I could be wrong. Uh, they're kind of limited by the NBN network as well because they've got to take that feed from the NBN. There's been a big hoo-ha uh, between Telstra and NBN because, well, Telstra, Telstra is simply saying the NBN is not fast enough. And so that, that's why there's been changes recently. Right. Now, How are we going to sort Kerry's problem uh, out? Uh, so at the end of the day, are, are you paying more or less? I'll be paying more, um, $15 a month more. So the All poor right. lady gets to pay $15 a month more for half the speed. I, really? I would go back to Telstra and I'd query that because at the end of the day, uh, you, know, you, the customer, your balance sheet is not quite balanced up. So you're getting a... Uh, possibly slower service 
uh, for more money, which just no. doesn't work. Slow and service, mm-hmm. Kerry, you tell them you're paying less money for it. And, and that's See, how I, I used put to it. have a um, contract with them, but then they stopped the contract. So, mm-hmm. But they didn't charge me, you know, any different to what I was paying mm-hmm. before. But it right. just... Um, yeah, just suddenly I, mean, I got you, this email. You, you, you just that, simply put it this way, Kerry. How can they reasonably, and this is the way I'd put it to them, how can you reasonably expect me to pay more for what is going to be an inferior service? And even if they say, mm-hmm. oh, we're offering you more data, I'm guessing, Kerry, that you don't actually need more data because you weren't using the old amount of data you had. Yeah. Um, they also they give you three add-ons a year. So, you know, that I was quite happy with it. Yeah. All right. Mm. Yeah. And those add-ons are gone um, now, are they? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I just turn around to them, Kerry. I don't know how inclined you are to do this. I'd just turn around if I was you and say, well, listen, what you're offering me is completely unsatisfactory. Mm-hmm. Would you mind coming back to me with a reasonable offer because I am going to have to explore my options with other telcos because, quite frankly, what you're offering me is rubbish. See, as far as I know, we can only have Telstra. Is that true? That's well, when in, I first built my house. They said that. Yeah, uh, in but, in some areas. So this is. Mate, I reckon in, that would contravene the laws of third line forcing. Uh, okay, effectively, yes, it's just Telstra stuff on the Telstra Velocity Network. But Telstra, because it's mandated, it's part of the law. They do have that um, fibre optic network available to other providers. Uh, but I think the catch is... But if is, Kerry's on the NBN, that doesn't apply anymore, does it? Uh, I'm on the... As far as I know, I'm on the optics, the optic fibre... Fibre optic. optic. Fibre optic. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, this is yeah. a part of the Telstra Velocity fibre optic network, which they've put into a whole bunch of uh, uh, new-ish estates. Uh, so, I mean, one area that I know of is Butler. Uh, so half of Butler is on the old HFC, the other half is on the Telstra Velocity the network. The parts that are on the I HFC mean, are lucky lakes. people. Okay, yes. So it's a very uh, a similar deal. Uh, so unfortunately, it it seems. I mean, you you could ask around. You could try some other providers. So there are others uh, oh, like okay. your, your TPG, Westnet, IINet, uh, Exitel. Um, hmm. uh, hey, look, you could even try our friends at Pentanet. Give them Pentanet, a go. Yeah, because okay, they, they yeah they don't even use fibre optic or HFC yeah. or N, uh, NBN. Uh, they have their own uh, fixed wireless and network. Kerry, we must move on now, but if all else fails... Yeah, thank you. If all else all fails, go to the telecommunications industry ombudsman. And the yep. thing to keep okay. in mind, just mm-hmm. the basics to keep in mind, they are, based on what you've, you're telling us, expecting you to pay more for an inferior service. Yeah. It ain't going to happen. Nah. And, and you, that's the thing you want to focus on. Yep. Jeez, that gets me angry. It really... <laughs> we're giving the old TIO a whole bunch of business at the moment, aren't we? I'll tell you what, no, we're not on a commission with the TIO. <laughs> Hi, Julie. Oh, hello. Um, I had a Samsung tablet, 10-inch, uh, uh, stolen from my car. Oh, dear. Now, my question to you is, when I, rang, uh, when I ring rather that number of that tablet, it said it's been converted... Now, I went to the uh, Telstra shop at Burragoon yeah. and the chap said, oh, I can't really tell you. Uh, he said, uh, if you can remember your uh, password, which I wrote down several, but none of them complied with it, even though I had driver's license and everything. He said to me, why don't you go to the Apple shop? I said, no, this is Telstra. I've got an account with you. It's nothing to do with Apple. So he sent me to the carousel uh, Samsung store there. Right. And the chap said, no, they can't give out the information of that, um, uh, the, the number it's been converted to. I have to go to the police. No, they can't give out the number it's been converted to. But what you have, because you've purchased the machine, mm. they have the capacity to shut it off. So nobody can reconnect it. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, All so right, they never suggested that. So I go back and say to them, shut mm. it off. Yep, yes. and, and yeah. say, so here's... Report it stolen. You can provide your 100 points of ID, Julie. Yes. To prove who you are. You yep. say that... Yes, I've got ta- all that. Mm-hmm. Right, the tablet's been stolen. I want it shut off. Yes. Yes. Right, and all of a sudden, Mr. I've pinched the tablet is going to find the tablet shut off. And in the meantime, if I was you, I'd put through an insurance claim. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. I can put it through an insurance claim. Yeah, because it's been oh, stolen. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Put okay. it through as an insurance right. claim. In the meantime, to be a real pain in the neck to those jerks who stole it from you, and I'm sorry that happened to you, Julie, yes. get the machine turned off. Yes. 
And what what they'll have is they'll have this wonderful machine that don't work anymore. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, thank that, you. Many that's what thanks. I think too, Julie. Thank you very John, much. John. This is Perth Tonight with Chris Ilsley on 882 6PR. Yes, indeed. Ben Aylitz here, 1L2Ts in Aylitz. Ben Aylitz dot com that's is the website. Right. And by the way, he's here in Australia and does understand Australia's technical issues. I do. Good day, Mazza. Yeah, good day, boys. How are you? Good day. Uh, what's up, mate? Uh, before I get into my point, Chris, tell what you do know, they just don't care. Well, sadly, I think you may well be right, my friend. I used to work for money, I should know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> just one anyway, anyway, former employee, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I cut my land on off three years ago, for, for, four years ago, for like my mobile's all I need. I can tell, so I'm not paying two bills. No, I mean, we, we, hardly anyone needs a landline these days. I can't, I can't think of any reason why someone would need a landline. Mobile, no, everything, it's fine. Except the quality yeah. is a damn sort better. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. We're talking about new technology, which is actually inferior in terms of technical quality to the old. Anyway, I've got a few people waiting. Muzzle, what yes. can we do for yes. you? Would you? What would your, be your thoughts, then on getting a Moto G5S fixed? If I've had problems with it in the past and it started playing up for me and dropped once or twice, would it be worth getting it fixed or buying a new phone? So it's a Motorola G5, is that right? Yeah, Moto, okay. Moto G5S. Okay, how long have you had it? Oh, I don't use it anymore as I've got the Nokia 8.1, but I'm thinking about getting it fixed again maybe instead of buying another one because I'm having problems with Nokia at the moment and <sighs> I've got to try and get it sorted. All right. Uh, for about um, five or $600, you can get yourself a Pixel 3a. Yeah, I know that. Yep. Yeah. I just thought, is it worth getting the old one fixed or not? I, I wouldn't bother. Uh, so th- so that okay. thing, you, you've had that for a few years now and it has been dropped and belted around. When they're repaired, they're not exactly the same as they were before. Never quite the same. Never Thanks for that, Mazza. Yes. I'd, I'd, hi, I'd Rita. Forget. Hi. Rita. Um, I had, went on the computer today and I was on last night on the desktop and also on the tablet about 6 o'clock. When I went on lunchtime today, I've got no internet. Mm-hmm. I've got a little white, uh, white circle with light, alternative horizontal and vertical lines, like squares. Yep. And when I go in, I've been on the phone for Telstra for an hour and a half. Uh-huh. They tell me what the problem is. I've got somebody else's uh, name. I've got a card with a... From the, from the with, with, when I got the MBN with a, a name and a password. Mm. I've got somebody else's name. And they have, well, haven't been able to help me. I'm getting a computer man coming tomorrow to see if he can help me. Wow. Okay. Uh, sorry, so you said you've have got you someone coming around? Like well, uh, having cards mixed up, that's uh, weird. So is this a brand new service that's just been installed or is this something that's been running for I've ages? I've had the internet over 12 months now, ah, I'd say. Okay. And they give you this little card, you know, this one, and they have the modem and the numbers are on the modem, all the green lights are on the modem, and the number on the modem is just the number that I've got on this card. Yeah. But it's a different number, different name. Hmm. Well, so they've given you a card that attaches to somebody else's? No, 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 no. When I stand being on, these two numbers are on the back of the modem. Yep, yeah. And a name and a password. And you, just, yeah. you, mustn't, you mustn't lose that because you need to know that. Yeah, so you I've do. I've yeah. got the card handy, but on that card I've got a, a, a name. It's something a different. Numbers. Yeah. And then I've now got a different name on my computer now. I can't get in. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, all right, all right. So your computer is trying to connect to a different network and it's not connecting uh, because <clears> it, cause it's not connecting to your own network. And they tried to tell me I need a, an internet line, and I thought, yes. well, the modem's in the kitchen, the, part, the desktop's in the bedroom, mile apart. Yep. Okay. Uh, now, sometimes uh, hmm, sometimes these routers, they can have their Wi-Fi net, uh, the Wi-Fi network can be turned off. If you accidentally bump the front of it, sometimes it's like a little button and it switches the network on and off. That can happen. Uh, so oh, I'd, I'd, I'd double check that. I'm not that. a computer person. <laughs> well, I'm 74 the, years old. Well, the good thing is you can be 74 years old and you don't have to be a computer person to fix a router. <laughs> <laughs> Switch it off and back on again. Have you tried that? Well, I turned it off and I haven't turned it. Yeah, you know, haven't turned it back on since turning it off this afternoon. No. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> try turning it on. That y- you never know. You might surprise yourself. It might actually work. Might actually resolve it. Yeah, give it a go. Yeah. But do you have someone coming out tomorrow? Did you say that? I've got, I'm trying to. I was going to see if a computer man can come out and help me tomorrow. Yep. Uh, I don't know whether they will. I, you know, uh, let me uh, know. Uh, we'll yeah, we'll just try turning it off and on first, Rita. Yeah. If they're a computer guy, there is a very good chance they can help you. Thank you very much for that. And good luck with that, Rita, but try turning it off and on first because 
sometimes that has a horrible habit of fixing things, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Mm. Anyway, anyway, Dave? Dave. Yes, um, I'm in a Telstra Velocity community and I can tell you that you are locked into Telstra. I've tried different providers, Ionet, I even tried Pentanet, yes. um, which can't reach my area. I'm ah. right up north in Yanchip. Okay. Um, so you are locked into that. Now, I had a problem where it was quite slow, you know, almost six months ago. Mm-hmm. So I rang them to try and get them to test the line and see what was going on. Right. But I was also noticed on their website um, under the velocity thing, you could actually pay extra to speed it up. So when I was talking to the tech guy about testing it, uh-huh. I asked him that question. Yep. It does cost an extra 20 bucks. I was happy for that. Right. He said, yep, give me a sec. I'll make a change, whatever. <laughs> and it went from 45 up to about 75 or 80. And got it. But then it disappeared again. When I rang, I got someone different. They said, no, you, you, can't, you can't have that. I said, well, I can. Jesus. I physically had it. Yeah. physically saw it going faster. Yeah. said, no, 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 it just doesn't work, and it doesn't work on that network. So I'm just a bit confused why one tech was able to do it, physically did it, charged me the $20, which mm-hmm. they then subsequently credited me back. Yep. But then now they're telling me I can't get to it. Dave? Just, yes. The cynical side of me has an answer you were lied to. And the fact that you're able to get the fastest service proves that it can be done. Yeah. But it suggests to me there might be some company policy whereby they don't allow it because if they have to do it for you, they have to do it for everybody. I'll bet that's what's behind it. Mm. Possibly. That's, that's, yeah, that's possible, yeah. yeah. Now, that's a good point. Thank you very much for that, Dave. We're just about out of time. Ben, you got yes. something coming up? I, actually, yes, I do have something coming up. So I am going to be a keynote speaker for the Crystal Eye Partner Briefing and Networking event, and this is going to be down in Bunbury. So uh, those of you that are running businesses in Bunbury or if you're a, an IT provider in Bunbury, come along Thursday the 2nd of April from 2pm to 5pm at the Dolphin Discovery Centre. Okay. Yeah. So you get to have a trip down south. I, I t- yes, I've got a trip down south with the lovely people from Red Piranha. Uh, the, these guys are actually a Perth-based information security or cyber security business and they are doing mm. amazing things. Beautiful. So, I love that name too, Red Piranha. Oh, it's, it's awesome, not, isn't it? It's not the kind of name you'd forget. <laughs> no. BenAylett.com is web website. Don't forget, one L, two T's in Aylett. And that's where you'll find all of Ben's contact info. We'll talk to you next week.